Hi folks, this is Lewis Herfin, the original Peter Abernathy. Hell is empty and all the devils are here on the Shadow TV What For Podcast with Roger, Gene, and Big D. Welcome back to Shadow on TV Westworld Edition, the unofficial podcast companion piece for the hit HBO television series Westworld. I'm one of your hosts, Roger Roper, and alongside me are my two co-hosts, Big D, Dick Ebert. Good evening. And Gene, the passenger lions. I've been instructed to give her whatever she needs. And this is our Instacast episode where we look back on this week's finale of Westworld Season 2 and provide our immediate reactions. Uh, again, boys, this week's episode was entitled The Passenger. What did you think? Uh, I, I gotta say it was probably my favorite hour and a half of television in the last probably two years, uh, from beginning to end, there was so much to love and only a a few minor parts that just kind of missed, uh, hitting the notes for me. So overall, uh, I couldn't be happier. I think I know where all the budget for the show went. This there was like <laughs> effect after effect. The bull, the bull scene alone, I was like, "Holy shit, that's amazing!" And the landscapes, gorgeous. Just visually, it was a delight. All season long, I have been having to go back and rewatch the episodes to truly enjoy them, and I think I'm going to have to do that here on the finale. In it was satisfying, I guess. Um, the the biggest thing I can compare it to is my mom's cooking. My mom was never a great cook, but when she did cook, it satisfied me. Like I was full at the end. I don't know. I never really appreciated it until I didn't have it. I guess if that makes sense. And so maybe I'll have to go back and rewatch it. And that I I think this is going to split the audience. I think there's going to be people who liked it. And then there's going to be people like uh, Scott Landis who tweeted at us. There are no sharks left to jump. Good luck defending this one. LOL. Oh, see, I, I disagree with Scott. My my complaints about the episode, or not even complaints, but I guess the, the disconnect for me was my brain was very satisfied. I was like, my brain was happy. My heart just felt kind of uninvested. And so that's where I, I felt the the disconnect. But Scott, I think I think this episode, the resolution kind of blew the story wide open. They, you know, we talked about having a simple idea of Westworld leading into a much bigger show, kind of like The Wire did. And I think this is exactly what, what this is. It's like the, the possibilities now are endless. Oh God! Now we're to- we're shifting from Lost to comparing it to The Wire. That's what we do here. But no, I mean, I, I got to tell you, I I like the way that they answered the mysteries and the reveals, and I felt it was balanced over the the entire hundred and ninety minutes. I looked at the clock at like forty five minutes in, and I still didn't know exactly where the episode was going to go and where it where it ultimately would end up. And I think that's to the showrunners and to the writing, and it was satisfying throughout the full ninety for me. Rob tweeted at us, if anyone says to you, I saw the ending of season two of Westworld coming from a mile away, disown them. You don't need to be associated with lying sons of bitches like that. Uh, Megan LaBella tweeted at us that moment when you think you understood the episode, then the post credit scene just blows it all to hell. Uh, And then Locke tweeted at us, wait, what? I need y'all to break this shit down. WTF, WTF, WTF. So with that being said, Gene, what are we going to be talking about on the Instacast tonight? Uh, we're going to follow the regular Instacast format, Raj, so just light touches on just our overall thoughts on the episode. Uh, some key things that we learned, there were a lot of uh, questions answered, as Westworld tends to do in the season finale. And then there are some new questions that are going to uh, towards season three. In particular, what the hell is going on with the man in black? Yeah, if you've never listened to Shout on TV, Westworld, before we do three episodes a week, this is our Instacast, which we record immediately after watching the Eastern time zone in America airing of Westworld. Then we go back into the studio tomorrow to record our deep dive where we look at overarching plot points and themes and theories uh, and then break it all down and release that on Tuesdays. And then on Friday, we release our Westworld telegraph where we read and respond the best emails and voicemails that we receive from you, the audience. Uh, We take the best parts of those emails and we respond to them, but you can see all the raw and unedited versions of those emails, plus all the emails that we didn't get a chance to read to on our website, chatontv.com. You can also check out our sister podcast, Chat the Movies, where we review 80s and 90s movies. People are really excited for that big trouble in little China edit, Big D. They keep tweeting at us. So uh, be sure to check out all the information over at chatthemovies.com. Okay. All that aside, let's get into this finale. Gene, you and I differ on the emotional connection of the episode. So uh, give us more of an explanation of the parts you had a problem with 
and then I'll kind of take the counterpoint. Sure. I hate to draw too many comparisons to other shows, but I, I, it reminded me of uh, of Band of Brothers. Uh, in Band of Brothers, when you uh, there, there's a scene in in the series where you kind of look back at all the people that are lost. They all kind of like disappear one by one. What happened to each person? And and you feel this incredible uh, uh, pain uh, in, in watching it. it. Each of these characters that you learn to love over the course of the series. Uh, and then all of them fading. Even the people who didn't die in combat, it's still it's still kind of painful. And there's a scene where Charlotte Hale is walking along the beach, and you see all the faces of the dead that you have come to know over the last two seasons. You see Maeve, you see Hector, you see Armistice. And I knew I was supposed to feel something, and I felt absolutely nothing toward them. Yeah, but at this point, we've already seen the the characters that we love. Their bodies is just a vessel. We've seen them transported into other bodies. So the carcasses just piled up there on the beach didn't affect me. But the emotional connection in some of the scenes that we saw, I thought was some of the best acting and, and really made us care and remind us why we care about the characters. Dolores and Bernard, where they're having that discussion of, about who is right. What's the way to go? Is Bernard being too kind? And Del Dolores finally says, I don't want to play cowboys and Indians anymore. Or what I think is the highlight of, of genuine human connection was the Logan and, and Jim Dalo scene uh, at the poolside where he's begging his father. I've hit rock bottom. The line we heard uh, in, in the, the fidelity tests when Jim Dalo you know, would break down, he'd hit the cognitive plateau. And he said, I'm at the bottom now. I, I'm, I'm looking up. That's Logan's line. And for a father to turn his back on his son, that writing was really close to home. Brian Ferber tweeted at us, there seems to be just too much in the Westworld finale to unpack in just one tweet. Uh, he just want, he, he, he says, just tell me if Stubbs was Teddy in the Instacast. Uh, you talk about those sleeves, those human um, bodies that the, they seem to be ingesting the, the host's uh, consciousness. And do you think that Stubbs was Teddy? Um, well, come on. Teddy has to, they have to have a spare Teddy. Teddy at least is in Hale's pocket. That's one of the five. Because we saw her take it out of Teddy. And she uses the slug that... Because you remember, she's spooning with Teddy. It's a nice, beautiful scene. She gets up. She's holding Teddy's control unit that's slightly damaged, and she has the bullet that hit it. And that slug is what she jams the man in black's gun with. So it's in her purse. Yeah, that's always why you spoon from behind uh, when you spoon your women's for fear of them stealing your MCU. But uh, at Jason Clark tweeted at us, is it OK that I don't know what to think? My mind is fried. It felt like the episode ended four or five times only to add another layer of confusion. I, I would disagree about the layers of confusion. This is one of the more straightforward episodes, actually. I thought it tied things together nicely, with the exception of the post credit scene with the man in black, which left me wondering a ton of things. But for the most part, I thought that it actually brought a lot of ideas together uh, really well. And what was really interesting about it is, first of all, you couldn't see what was coming. And if you could see what was coming or the things that you did see coming – the reasons why were kind of surprising. People's motivations, uh, characters' motivations, were had little surprising twists to them. And and I agree with you, Big D. That scene with uh, Dolores and Bernard, the the rage and emotion that finally comes out of her in that final scene was really powerful. Okay, so yeah, I know I've just been heaping and just ugh, just th this lapping praise on the show. Never make that sound again. <laughs> sorry, sorry. At Chris Callahan tweeted, "Fuck the bicameral mind all over again." So a couple of scenes that I really had an issue with QA and their inept ability to, to stop any kind of host uprising hit a pinnacle of this episode. There's like three hosts. I think it was, it was Maeve. It was uh, Hector. They're on horseback. A couple of vehicles come up behind. They start lighting them up with automatic fire and they can't kill them. That that's your complaint. Not when the man no, in black yes, and Dolores yes, on horseback yes, took out yes. two guys with cover and automatic weapons. <laughs> yes. at, uh, well, AIM uh, tweeted at us. The one frustrating trope in this show is the security ge detail that can't shoot anything and just get killed left and right. Like even when they were sweeping for survivors, they were at like point blank range and still shooting people like in the ribs and like the thigh. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes yeah I, I agree I, and also I think as far as scenes that didn't hit Maeve's death sadly I, I didn't feel anything it you know you're supposed to feel this this dread as the the virus is moving its way up the hill and they shoot Clem but it keeps coming but in the end I was like 
eh. Okay, well, let me ask you guys this. Is it because we've seen these hosts die too much and then come back, get resurrected, and that's why we don't feel like there's an emotional connection? I, I think it's a bit of that. I think it's also just the the ridiculousness of it, right? We see Dolores get plugged several times, yes. and she's fine, but then Maeve gets shot through the chest, and we've seen her get shot multiple times, and she was fine, but now suddenly she dies. It's like, what are the rules? What kills you? Um, I did think, though, Big D, and I don't know if you guys agree with this, but the gaze that Akichita gave Maeve in that scene was, was said everything between the two of them. And I thought it was a really, really beautiful. It was like two seconds, but it made a world of difference. OK, can, can I put on my Raj as a writer in Westworld hat for just a moment? OK, would it have been better? Would it have been better as Clementine is coming up the hill? She starts infecting some of like the Maeve crew, like where you see them tr- like struggling, trying to fight against the code yes each other like that might have been a little bit more of an emotional weight scene that i could have gotten behind you are a hundred percent correct you hit it if if the, the code is infecting them and mave is holding them all back right she's trying to make them like like fight the virus and in that time the qa comes up right behind her and then just lights her up and kills her that's what it sh- that would have been fine it would have served both purposes and that's not the only unnecessary death in this episode, though. The Sizemore death made no sense at all. The only thing I could think of is he's he is a narrative writer. He's so overwhelmed with the poetic idea of heroism that that he does something stupid. But it was completely unnecessary. He literally could have walked out there, put his hands up, and talked for 30 seconds until they had time to escape. Not even that. The QA says, sir, please <laughs> put your gun down, sir. We know it's you, sir. We understand you're a human Sir, it's like they knew who he was. And they were like, "Why are you doing this, sir?" It's white privilege. It oh, is. God. no! Oh my God. Come on, for me, I loved it. I loved it. Y- you know that the the character of Hector was based off of a love that Lee had lost himself, and Hector was the man he wished he could have been. So I was okay with it at the end when he gets to deliver that dialogue, that that monologue he had written for Hector during the second robbing of the Mariposa when Hector gets shot by that that terrible guest i was like yes and he's yelling here i fucking am and he gets lit up he went out in a blaze of glory just like lee deserved sir pounce tweeted at us did his heart really grow three sizemores that day hashtag rap yeah uh, it's, uh, it's a little come like listen, on. it is tropey that he went out that way but i, I feel like that was sizemore's way that he would want to yeah, go out it's, it's, a, it, it's a little strange but you talk about Aki Chita, and like I, I felt like, yes, that was the first emotional moment when he gets slugged in the back and the kidney. And I thought, holy shit, his entire family is there. This is what he's been waiting for. Most of us really enjoyed that Kiksuya episode where it really focused on his journey to towards consciousness. And then I thought, oh, shit, he's not going to make it. That was the one emotional moment. That was the gravity that did it for me. Yeah, there was a certain beauty also to the people when they were passing through to sort of that Eden uh, heaven fissure and then you would see their bodies just cast off and drop down the cliff i thought that was really beautifully done also the closing scene i i shouldn't you know complain too much about the emotions in this episode because the closing scene i thought was terrific they had radiohead's codex uh playing and bernard the, the home that he had built there in the in the mainland and just everything uh I almost said everything in its right place which is another radiohead song but but basically it was such a summary and a bookend on the on the entire season where a codex is, if you're not familiar, it's the modern form of a book, right? So there's scrolls and there's a codex, you know, binding, cover, pages. AIM tweeted at us, it seems like Charlton Heston should have been standing on a rock as the host walked through the doorway. And Chris Callahan tweeted at us, 23 and Me should sell gene code books now, uh, talking about codex. So yeah, I, this is the perfect book. And you talk about books, if they're going to shift gears in season three, four, possibly five, they need to do this. They need to get out of the parks. Uh, last night on Twitter, there was a, a group of us who were talking about that, that fissure, that, that visual rip or tear uh, that the hosts see as the entrance into the passage to Eden. Uh, there was a lot of people who were worried this was going to be a, a Truman show, that there was some kind of, it was a dome and that was proof. I thought it was a simple, elegant way to visualize, to drive all the hosts to the center of the park to give them the option to go through it, it tied into the door. Uh, I was okay with it. I suspected that Gene was going to have a problem with it. So I was kind of surprised to hear you liked it. 
it bars on the matrix, but it answers. I mean, it, it poses a larger question, which anytime you're going to get into a larger philosophical question, I can get behind it. Something may not look right scientifically, but it's but it's bringing up the question of like, if you have the opportunity to pass on to a heaven, you know, quote unquote heaven, but you're not going to the real world. It's just as Dolores says, it's another world that they've created for us. Is that is that where you can finally rest, or did all those people just seriously die for no reason? Well, it's a gilded cage. That's what I think Dolores says. And I mean, but what is heaven other than a gilded cage, right? I think that's a nice parallel. Uh, Achilles tweeted at us. I kind of low key think the real world is also a simulation. Like William is actually a human in the real world, but all that world was a park made for him. Meta. So uh, if I'm correct here, the 30 percent of the hosts that have virgin control units, that is the 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 portion that went to the, to Eden. Correct. So they were wiped clean because they were downloaded completely. Correct. Right? Into the Eden. Right. So I liked that. I thought that was good that they explained that in a way that was logical. One last thing I want to talk about here on overall impressions. Gene's big fear, I think, in the deep dive uh, was how they were going to do a visual representation of the forge. You know, because you could have done this in a lot of ways that would have been campy and cheesy. We've seen it done before, whether it's the Matrix so what was your thoughts on that that entire time within the forge? I'm glad you clarified within the forge because the outside of it just looked Dr. Evil's lair with like red lights on. It looked like Dr. Evil was making <laughs> French fries. I kind of was hoping for a shark with laser beams to hop out of the water there. No, but I thought, yeah, the inside of it um, made a lot of sense. It, it did callbacks to familiar things that we'd seen in the episode before. Uh, so, I mean, sorry, it did callbacks to things that we had seen in the series before. I thought it was really well represented. Uh, also, the idea of it not being meant for a conscious mind uh, so that it, it doesn't make sense is kind of the upside down. And I, I appreciated that. I thought they did a good job. And, and I'm glad they didn't make it some sort of like... <laughs> Like weird green screen thing with like binary flying all around, and you know, uh, like I don't want to, I don't want to see it out of hackers. At times, it got a little matrixy for me when you know, it's Logan, and, or not just matrixy, but what was the movie with Jodie Foster? And then she, it's the aliens, and she goes, "It's contact, right?" And she gets there, and you're like, "Yeah, we're finally going to see aliens after two hours," and it's her dad. And it's like, I'm I, I'm Logan, but I also represent the AI that controls everything. I'm a familiar face around here. You're terrible. I loved this representation in this in the show. And now that steaming pile of, of shit contact, I can't unsee that parallel now. You've just you've ruined it. Here, let me let me let me wipe it all away. Just compare it to Interstellar instead. <laughs> oh jeez. All right. Well, let's talk about things that we learned in the episode. Sure, yeah. Uh, so let, actually, great springboard there. Logan uh, serves as the Forge's control program, right? So Dolores says, I want to get down into what's really running the thing, get down into the system. And and we learned a couple things in the conversation with Logan. Uh, one is that Bernard had been there several times, right? So this is not his first time at the Forge. Um, and Bernard had instructed uh, Logan, the, the system, to give Dolores whatever she wanted. So the Forge has these... You know, four million souls. These these human uh, uh, recordings, basically, as simple bound algorithms, and Dolores had access to all of them, which is incredibly powerful. We kept assuming the problem was they couldn't collect enough data, they couldn't get an accurate, detailed uh, copy of their consciousness, and that wasn't the issue. The issue was the complexity wasn't true to human psyche and their and their who they are at the core. That you had to dumb it down to that ten thousand lines of code. And I thought that was that was great to see. Uh, another thing I learned was that Dolores actually created Bernard. It was her project that Ford had tasked. So the whole time we had almost envisioned Dolores as the project of, of Bernard. It was nice to see this entire time. It was actually reversed. Right. And, and speaking of reversals, we also see that in this episode that Bernard was uh, playing QA and not the other way around, that he had premeditated all the events, you know, created Hale as a host, uh, set himself up on the beach, had that conversation with Ford as a farewell. All that stuff that had happened uh, of, of him playing QA, where I thought the entire season that the QA was plugging him for information. It was the other way around. So when he's talking to Ford, is he actually talking to Ford or is he imagining himself talking to Ford? No, he's yeah, he's imagining himself talking to Ford. Got it. Well, I think that's still up for debate. He's having the conversation with Ford on the beach and he says, I've deleted you. 
And Ford's comment is, you'll find that your memory isn't that reliable. So he's thinking that he deleted him, but he actually might not have. You'll notice that Bernard also gave the reason why his memories were unaddressed, right? That he wanted to be able to scramble it all up so that it couldn't be undone uh, before he laid himself out. So he kind of scrambled his own brain uh, and and did it to himself. Yeah, and, and also the big one was that uh, there had been 4 million guests who had passed through Westworld. Do we find that number to be a bit high? Were, were, were there discount days you know, to, to get the park attendance up? I was curious about that because if your maximum stay is like 28 days or whatever, and then you figure it's $40,000 a person, but we don't know what the world population is, right? The world population could be massive and therefore it's actually just a small fraction. Yeah, but does that 4 million is probably across all six parks, right? The Forge is probably a collective of all the parks. You don't think that there's a Forge that exists in the Raj or in uh, what Shogun World or any of the unnamed parks yet. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of one of the things that left me a little, a little scratching my head at the end of this. I was like, did they just show us other worlds just for the novelty of it? Like, we don't get any relationship between Emily and the Raj again. It's it's insignificant, really. Uh, Shogun World doesn't really rear its head again. And we're just kind of like, okay, so those are, those are just for entertainment? What's going on? Yeah, and another good point that was clarified was uh, we had hypothesized that you could run you know, countless variations and fidelity tests in the digital state before you actually printed them in, into a flesh body. And th- to learn that it actually took 18 million variations or versions of Jim Delos just to get him to replicate the fidelity answers, sh- you couldn't have done that without AI. That would have taken them thousands of years. So the artificial intelligence and, and doing it virtually made it possible to even try in the real world. Yeah. Um, we already talked about Dolores being in hail. Now, if you didn't catch that at the end, what Bernard created was a hail sleeve, if you will, and then put in Dolores's consciousness into that. And that's what, uh, that's what you see at the end as well. Okay. In all of our emails, we averaged a hundred plus a week, nine weeks. Did anyone suspect or write in that they thought Dolores was in hail. No, but I think Jez said that Emily is Logan and that we would see that by episode six. So <laughs> good call, Jez. <laughs> and James was William. But the I, I think there was a Reddit post. I don't know. I have I, I can finally go back on Reddit now and see if that happens. But also the individual Joe uh, who wrote or, or, or kept that timeline She's on Twitter now proclaiming that she got very close to the hail is Dolores with who's uh, who's the one that writes for Vanity Fair, Joanna Robinson. Mm -hmm. So Kim Renfro, rather, I'm sorry, Kim Renfro did the timeline. Her and Joe and Robinson are tweeting that they got it somewhat right, but also they get screeners of this uh, of the show. They've had knowledge of this ending for quite some time so i don't know how real this is uh listen we have zero relationship with hbo as do most most of our listeners so i'm a little suspect on that you you want to talk about nostradamus though big d and i were talking earlier today and he's like i think uh the salt water <laughs> floods the forge and that's what ruins it i was like that would be so anticlimactic and dumb <laughs> it was ruined by salt water he's like yeah i think <laughs> hold so on, hold well, on Hold on. What about we got to call out Raj here? Raj, uh, was Teddy Bernard? Was Bernard Teddy? What about your whole hypothesis? That's that's a lot closer. Let's talk about your Bernard is AI theory, boys. Hey, nothing's proven yet. We haven't been disproven. (laughs) There's still a chance. Uh, but uh but so, hey, substance a host, I think, was one that's been floated since season one. So I think that that's are we on board with Stubbs as a host? Do we think, I mean, it was a little ambiguous at the end, but he definitely gave a speech that, that aired on the side of that being true. Yeah. I, th- I think it's pretty clear that Stubbs is a host, but what bothers me about that whole thing is again, going back to just like the tropes and, and the odd facts about why in the world would you make your head of security a host? It seems like the one thing you should not do. It's like having the, your, you know, the dog pound run by an actual dog. No, because he's he's hoping, look at what the humans could do as QA. Do you want somebody in that position that is to protect the host? You needed it to be a host 
QA would have just done something ridiculous and end up getting everybody killed. That is a great question, Big D, but also talking about some new questions that were that were brought up in the show. Uh, we, we do have a few of them. Gene. At, first of all, we see that kind of like the wink and the nod between Felix and Sylvester. Like, okay, we want you guys to handle all these bodies on the beach and salvage what you can. Uh, do you guys think they're going to get the band back together for season three? Is that what's going on? Yeah, I mean, that's the only reason for Felix and Sylvester. I felt bad for Ptolemy Slocum and Leonardo Nam because they just seem to be standing there. And then it's like, okay, you go run behind that. You go run behind that that boulder. And so we need you again on the beach. I, they had nothing to do this entire season. Yeah, Leonardo, just we're not going to give you a holster either. You just carry the gun around, <laughs> that tiny, your tiny little six shooter, and uh, don't do anything with it, though, okay? No, but they served a purpose. When that uh, the, the visual entrance to the Garden of Eden is there, they needed to show us that the humans can't see it because they looked at each other like, what the fuck are they talking about? I don't see anything. Did you get, did you get a little smile? How they were riding on, on a horse together. <laughs> I didn't even see that. <laughs> like, I didn't see that. They were on a horse together. Just, just cupping each other. Um, what other questions? Uh, okay. So I, th- I'm still wondering on the, on the four, I'm going to say that one for deep dive actually. Um, I'm still wondering what the hell happened to the man in black. I thought I was going crazy because I saw him. He's in the elevator. He's got the the revolver in his pants. He's loading it with his what's left of his hands. And uh, and then the next thing we know, he's on a stretcher. Well, hold on, Rod. You got to explain that because I don't think everybody stayed all the way to the to the Avengers end of credit sequence. I don't think everybody saw it. Gene, you saw the after credit scene, right? Yeah, I wasn't even talking about that. Oh, I'm talking yeah, about but- what, like, literally what happened to him. He, we see him in the elevator, and then the next thing we know, we see him on the stretch. This is before the oh, end Oh, credits. okay. Okay. And okay, he, he so- got to the beach somehow, and I'm like, what the hell just happened there? So here's what I think happened. Here's what I think happened. In the entire episode, it's explained that humans are fairly simple, and we're running pretty much the same loops over and over and over again, right? The man in black that you see... When he leaves Dolores after he after he the the gun misfires and blows off his fingers and then he goes into the elevator and goes down. That's that's in the same timeline as when he shows up in the beach and he's on a stretcher, right? Because you see the injury, right? So that's that's the real time frame, correct? Yep. And then in the post credit scene, he's in the elevator again and it's the forge, but it seems to be, in my opinion, sometime way in the future. And there is an Emily bot that's welcoming him. And his hand's still blown off. And his hand is still blown off. Here's what I think is happening. He's running the fidelity test again and again. And and he this is the furthest he's gotten. But he's running again to uh to what he went through in all of season one and season two. Like that's the ultimate fidelity test is him reliving this loop. No, see, I read it as he got into the elevator. He went down and he had his final break, his hallucination because the, the M it's not an Emily bot. She's saying you're not in the forge. This is real. You're in the park. He is having, he's finally mentally snapped. All of his, we saw his profile has come true. He is a human and has had a meltdown. And that is his final visualization and realization that he's fucking crazy. So I'm glad you guys have both of those theories. I'm still trying to figure out what happened between him getting in the <laughs> elevator what, and what, then him being on the stretcher. Like you think that there's going to be some showdown. He's loading his gun and then there's he's on a stretcher. Yeah. Well, this I, is I, what happens with the Instacast. We, we need to go back and watch it. We, we need to go back and watch it. Yeah. So if, if you know, if you have an idea, write in hosts at Shad on TV. Uh, we already talked about um, the the five pearls, Holoris no, or no. Uh, Dale. No, we didn't. No, we didn't. No, we didn't. No. Oh, we didn't? All right. So no. that's, I guess that's the other question is, is what are the five pearls? Who did, what did Dolores let's, sm- smuggle let's out start of the that part over again? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Right, There's no transition. <laughs> no. So, yeah. So I think the final question that I have is, uh, you know, host or human <laughs> stubs allows Dolores in Charlotte Hale's body to board the plane and leave and she opens her purse and there are five pearls inside the purse just we've seen the episode once real quick who do we think the five hosts or the because they were their host pearls who do we think they are the Beatles <laughs> did they visit <laughs> the, the park? Beatles with the fifth Beatle is in there as well no <laughs> I think uh well Dolores uh, too no I think uh you have to put Teddy in there, right? So, I mean, yeah. let's go based upon let's go based upon actors in the show. 
right? Mm-hmm. You you would have to say Hector. You'd have to say no. Why? You'd have why to would, say why Teddy. Why would Dolores care about him? You don't think you don't no. think Hector's a- getting Escaton's coming back? No, he's getting brought back by Felix and Sylvester. Okay. So le- so who did Dolores? Communicate. You think Lewis Hertham is coming back? You think Peter Abernathy? Anybody in? who's following him on Twitter, I read his tweet about production and you know season three. I read it even before this episode, as he was there was some subtext that he was coming back, but that was just me. okay. So that so so all right. So that would be two right there, Teddy and Peter Abernathy. Let's think about. So now we have three more. Who do we think? They're hosts. They're they're black pearls. Well, I mean, if you oh fuck. I'm trying to think who she cared about. You know, we never saw Dolores' mother. Is there a chance when she went back to Sweetwater with Teddy that she went out there and actually got the control unit from her mother? No. No, I don't think there's I don't think there's any possibility of that. Yeah, I mean, if we weren't restricted to hosts, I would say that it, that the most logical thing to do would be to bring back like the creative team, right? So you got your your Bernard and your obviously Bernard is there, uh, yeah, and then a Ford and then, you know, yada yada. Maybe maybe a James Dalos for for shits and giggles, but uh, I think that it is one of those things. What would really piss me off is if we never find out. <laughs> well, well, like- let me, well, let me ask you this: Is one of those pearls Bernard? That would make three because she creates a Bernard. Well, it has to be a Bernard. Yeah, okay, so that's three. So Peter Abernathy, Bernard, and Teddy. Uh, Teddy. Okay, so now we're down to two. Uh, would she bring back? Would she bring? Back- no, she can't because Angela blew up. <laughs> what, what about Lawrence? Would Lawrence make sense? No. <laughs> no. They even meet? No, see, yeah, this is why we shouldn't hypothesize on the Instagast. We think of three. If if you think you have another five or you know the last remaining two, write in to us hosts at chatontv.com. We did ask all the audience to send in their questions and their comments on Twitter uh, during the finale with the hashtag WW chat. A lot of the comments uh, I did already read. We do have some Twitter questions that I am uh, going to go in rapid fire here. Uh, Gillian tweeted at us. William is a human. Maven and friends will seemingly be revived by Sylvester and Felix and be stuck in Westworld. Still Dolores is in Charlotte and her own body Ford definitely dead. Akichita and Teddy are in a simulation floating in space. Stubbs is definitely a host. Is that it? So uh, I want to start with the with the Dolores and Charlotte, uh, both or Charlotte's body and Dolores's body, both being Dolores. I was confused by that, too, because you see Dolores uh, after, you know, in the bunker with Bernard uh, on the mainland and they're they're talking. And then you see Charlotte Hale show up, who also last time we saw was Dolores, too. So it it's curious in that I don't think she'd be in both. So you got to kind of figure out who who else is is in there. And who's in what body. So that should be a fun exercise. Yeah, and I think she has an interesting take on where they sent the data because they realign the phase array and they don't send the data uplink to the Delo server. So some space station, it would probably be the safest place you could put them. Does that mean Westworld on another planet confirmed? I wouldn't go confirmed, but yeah. possibly plausible. Sorry. C Singer tweeted at us, will there even be a cast left for the third season? Everyone's getting got. Yeah, I think there's definitely going to be a cast uh, left for the third season. Although this is a great way to save money. I think you've mentioned something similar to like to this before, Raj, where it's like, is, if you could just keep swapping bodies, then you keep your overhead really low. Like, you just be like, uh, okay, let's get some more unknown actors in here, please. It's like The Walking Dead. Uh, Dale Norman tweeted at us, guys, any thoughts on doing a rewatch from Westworld from the beginning and doing a podcast per week or two? I mean, it would it would probably still be our most popular podcast because <laughs> no one wants to listen to Shat the Movies. Oh, come on. Please, Shat the Movies that's does not great. Fair. That's not yes, fair. Yes, that's... Well, I mean... No. I mean go ahead. No, we've... Listen, at, by, the, by the time all this is done for season two, we'll have done 70 overall Westworlds. Maybe we'll do a, an interview with a cast member. But, uh, you know, may, maybe we'll do one... Westworld Telegraph every two months again if there's if there's interest but yeah. no I have, I have zero interest in going back and reliving all this again I'm as simple as my code is I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be stuck in a loop yeah this this is I I sometimes feel Dolores like I'm Dolores this has been a rough ride it's a lot of work and it's mentally <laughs> taxing uh, I, I just I just want to get out of the park uh, C Singer tweeted at us if Maeve could stop everyone why not just do it earlier oh 
Okay, this goes back to one of the telegraphs that we got where it's like their powers only come into play, uh, you know, when it's convenient for the storyline. Yeah, she should have been like, oh, here comes Clementine. Like, stop, Clementine. <laughs> Clementine's horse, turn around and go back the other way. Like, <laughs> scare right. the horse. That's right. It's Clementine's horse, horse was supposedly a, a host, so you would think that you should be able to control that because uh, we see her controlling buffalo or bison or not bison, uh, bulls. Uh, in in the episode, uh, Gareth tweeted at us, how deep into Reddit theories and other fan speculation did you get this season? Did you find the multitude of X as a host theories as annoying and unimaginative as I did? Gareth, the the entire concept of the equal sign, anytime I see one, I like cringe now. I get slightly nauseous because it was just like all season we saw name equals name over and over and over again. Like that's what the whole show was about. Uh, it was very frustrating. Uh, the entire season, I went to Reddit once and it was due to an email that somebody sent uh, i hate reddit uh, i hate the theories there and i hate the redditors what about gone wild though <laughs> that's, that's different that's, that's different different I my like favorite G- people in the world <laughs> i like g i like gw couples uh the yeah i have stayed away from reddit i'm gonna go back the only time i've gone on reddit this season was the bernardist teddy theory and then to see if they, if anyone was talking about our podcast which they did. Yeah, they, they actually did. Uh, Gareth also uh, wants to know what each of our favorite uh, episodes of this season was. He says his was probably Kiksuya. Same. Uh, um, I think I, w- what was the one that Lisa Joy directed? Was that episode four? Uh, I don't remember uh, the name Sphinx. of it. Riddle of the Sphinx. That was my favorite. Riddle of the Sphinx was my favorite. I, I, it's hard without seeing this again because I, I always have that recency bias where I'm, I'm thinking it's it's this one, but the the one with with Akicheta becoming Akicheta. Fuck Akicheta. me, uh, that's Kiksuya. Yeah, right, that one. Keep was going. Good. Sam Levin tweeted at us. So, what's the humans' plan? Do they fix Maeve and set her loose to fight Dolores? Uh, the humans don't know Dolores is loose, man. They think she's <laughs> dead. That's right. And, if there's any humans that's going to set Maeve loose, it's going to be Sylvester and Felix. And, and God, maybe this is like, you know, what was it? Idiocracy, that, that movie, or uh, Wally, how humans in, in the future are just stupid. QA can't kill them. How do we think that the humans in the real world could even contain them if they knew she was there? Dolores should have a cakewalk just taking over humanity. You know, one thing that I thought was cu- cool that we didn't talk about when you, when you're, su- when you're, as, now that you bring up QA, as Charlotte Hale, who's Dolores, what are we calling it? What oh, is I, it? I said Dale. Dale. Dale, Dale or, we're uh, calling it Dale. Or uh, what? what Holoris? Holoris is yours. Hol- yeah. Holoris. Okay. A couple things. Number one, you saw the QA examine the back of her neck and she seemingly passed. Is that because Bernard built her in a in a separate unknown bunker that didn't have the the little chip or the the bomb no you remember when they when they make the host they have to replace the vertebrae with the c6 c4 okay so obviously when bernard built the replacement hail he just left that out the same as the replacement uh mave was built without it does that lend any credence though to the man of black that we see is possibly a host anybody could be a host okay got it the other thing is a lot of people are probably going to write in i'm just i'm putting on my my Kiksuya, uh, and I'm, I'm looking into the future here, the the picture that Bernard looks at at the end, people are going to write in, that's Charlotte. That's a young Charlotte. That's a young, that's not Charlotte in the photo that he looks at, right? That's Charlie. That's his Charlie. Son. Okay, cool. Just clearing that up. Please don't write into us saying that was Charlotte. Uh, quite probably Seth tweeted at us, what characters in the show do you feel should have a character-centric episode a la Kiksuya what character needs cut? Uh, his answers are Elsie and Hale. Hale needs to be cut, but he wants to see a Elsie centric episode. What are your guys' thoughts? Well, I don't, I don't know if an Elsie episode's <laughs> in the works anymore. <laughs> yeah. uh, and I think Hale's going to be around for a while. So, Seth, you're going to really hate season three. I think I, I wouldn't mind to see a, a a Peter Abernathy early on to see his his lawman days or to see his his origin in the park. Yeah, I would like to see a full Peter Abernathy story without any, a doubt. Any chance to get Lewis Hertham back on the show? <laughs> uh, I would also like to see maybe an entire episode. This is probably an unpopular opinion. I want to see an entire episode of just Felix and Sylvester, which no. we'll probably get in season three. 
we'll probably get that in season three, especially if they have to fix Maeve and bring back all the hosts. No, that's like that terrible spinoff of the X Files. What was it, the Grassy Knoll, where they had the? Are you? Yeah. What? Yeah, I think it was the. There was a spinoff of the X Files. It was the like the the nerdy group of guys. I think it was called the the Grassy Knoll, wasn't it? Is it gonna is it gonna be as bad as Marvel's Marvel's Agents of Shield? That's gone seemingly un like how how did that happen for five seasons on ABC? Oh, it's called the Lone Gunman. I was in the I was in the, the Lone Gunman. Yeah, it wasn't the grassy you were knoll. Close. It was the Lone Gunman. <laughs> uh, Jordan Smith tweeted at us: Was Emily running a fidelity test on Man in Black in the future, and she only died in the VR world and is really still alive in the real world? Personally, I agree with Big D. I think that he's just nuts and he's hallucinating. The that facility, even if it was. Uh, you know, I believe that he's even if he's really there and it's really under that condition, there's no way that it's producing some sort of a virtual reality pr- a projection. Um, it doesn't. It just doesn't make sense. Who would have programmed Emily in? Why would they do it? I mean, it, it's possible. Anything's possible, like we said. But I think he's just crazy. Uh, Sean Vondren tweeted at us. Okay, guys, did the host that passed into the valley beyond survive the system failsafe or flooding of the server? And how did Teddy get there? Yes, and I was wondering the same thing. So I, they did survive. They were, they were, you know, beamed up. I think that was pretty clear. But how Teddy got there? The only thing I can think of is again, Dolores. Yeah, she had it. You know, took his control unit out. So she right, put and then put too. it in. Yeah, there. Dolores right. did it. But but which which would speak to the fact that she did have sort of you know a, a, as you saw a change of heart because initially she was like I don't give a fuck. Right. Jordan Smith tweeted at us. I'm confused on the timeline of Dolores leaving the boat or on the boat rather. And them saying they found a high value target. Didn't they find Bernard? Then they find Holoris at the Mesa and then she killed them at all the forge and then left on the boat. Who's the high value target. Uh, that would be one William, the man in black. He's the That's high right. value target. They show him immediately after in the tent. I agreed. Uh, Francis, the mute did the after credits mean what I think is Stubbs saying he knows. Will we see other hosts? who made it across again find out next time on dragon ball i mean uh westworld uh, i've never watched dragon balls no but like <laughs> <laughs> I will the will will we see other hosts like teddy and Aki? yeah but I, what was the what was the reference there the I just like Big D brandishing his cool <laughs> his cool dad credentials. I've never well, seen Dragon Balls. <laughs> Dragon Ball Z Whatever. Big D. Dragon Ball Z. Uh, will we see the other hosts again? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think they can completely wipe the cast. Uh, yeah. The ones that the ones that went on into the into the valley beyond, I guess, into the uh, into Eden. I think that they were beamed away. They could be ba- beamed back. Dolores did say a curious thing, though. I'm sorry. Uh, there was a curious fact inserted into all that, though, which was that that link was was broken. That there was no way to connect it again. But they say a lot of things on the show that don't turn out to be true. Yeah, it's basically it seems to me like it's the equivalent of just uh, uh, going off of a server, your own uh, individual server farm, private server, and then uh, pushing it into uh, the cloud, into, uh, you know, um, Microsoft Azure cloud services. It feels like that's what they did. Where are they beaming it to? Well, satellites. Well, no, I mean, if you truly want to protect it, have it living in multiple servers. That's right. So that idea makes sense. That's the best way to protect it. You can't delete them all or you make it more difficult. Whereas if you had them in space, you could just shoot that one down. Hashtag blockchain. Yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, and then Brian Ferber, the last tweet at us. Don't show this to the rescue dog. You talk to sleep. Uh, thanks everyone who tweeted at us with the hashtag WW chat. Uh, again, if you want to be part of the podcast, and you have some thoughts or you have some theories that you would like us to discuss or you want us to answer, please email us hosts at chat on TV.com. You can check out all our emails again on our website, chat on TV.com. Is there anything else we want to talk about before we close up shop here on the Instacast and get ready for that deep dive, which we'll release on Tuesday. All right. Well, that does it for this week's episode of Chat on TV Incicast. I guess that's it. This is the last Incicast of season two. Be sure to follow us everywhere on social media. Share with a friend. We're everywhere on Twitter, Snapchat, and Instagram. Just follow the handle at Chat on TV or Facebook. Search for Chat on TV podcast. That website, once again, 
chatontv.com. That email hosts at chatontv.com. Again, we're everywhere fine podcasts can be found, including iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and YouTube. Be sure to subscribe. And if you stop by anywhere, please be sure to leave a review. That really helps the podcast grow. Uh, you can also check out, again, our sister podcast, chatthemovies.com. And on our website, we've got a couple of donation links. If you feel generous, but you don't have to, sharing with a friend is the best way to grow the podcast. On behalf of my co-hosts, Big D, Dick Hebert, and Gene Lyons, I'm Roger Roper. Be sure to join us on Tuesday for a deep dive of Season 2, Episode 10, the finale. Thank you so much for listening. Take care. We'll see you next time uh, in the base of bar. <laughs>